morning, welcome to day 15 of Vlogmas. So it is Friday the 15th of December and today is my children's last day at school. They finish quite early this year, definitely quite a lot earlier than in recent years. So they've got all of next week off before Christmas the following Monday. I think it's just down to how Christmas has fallen but Yes, yeah, so they were quite excited going off to school today, knowing it's the last day and I'm sure they'll be up to lots of fun things and there won't be much work happening there today. And I have to go and collect them a little bit early, so I've got to keep my eye on the time today. But I am hoping to get a bit of sewing done and take a bit of time for myself before the Christmas holidays ensue. So that is on the plans. Um, I will talk about what I'm planning to sew um, in a moment. But I'll start off the video as usual with um, what Elf was up to in the night. And when we came down this morning, we found Elf had set up what looked like either a little pony school or a pony sort of grooming salon or something along those lines. I'll put a picture up so you can see what he was doing. He had borrowed a little riding hat um, from the Barbies and then he was grooming a little pony and he'd set out lots of food like a hay bale and the pony seemed to be really enjoying a bit of pampering there. And actually, there was a whole queue of other ponies. It looked like they were all flocking from the Pony Palace um, to visit Elf's little um, setup. Um, so yeah, there were loads of ponies waiting there to join in. And it was quite cute, actually, because I found one pony. Didn't look so interested in what Elf was doing. They were just sitting and working on their sewing machine in the palace. So I'll put a picture up of that pony, too. <laughs> That's a pony um, of my own heart there. So yes, and that is what Elf was up to this morning. So busy, busy again. Um, it looked like maybe he was planning to go riding or maybe he was just a bit confused about why he needed to wear the hat. I'm not sure, but yes, he looked quite happy there looking after the ponies. So that is what Elf was up to this morning. And then in terms of what I'm wearing today, well, it's quite cold here today. So I thought I'd wear a nice cozy pinafore dress. Um, and this pinafore dress I made using this pattern here. It's a lovely pattern, the So Liberated Hinterland dress pattern. So it's a woven dress pattern for a dress with a gathered skirt and there's quite a lot of options built in in terms of sleeve length so you can either make like a sleeveless version or a short sleeve or a longer sleeve version and then there's a button down placket you can make either just on the bodice or you can take it all the way down the front of the dress and there were different dress lengths built into I think like a above the knee and maybe like a midi length too um, and um, yes it's got um, pockets and it's finished nicely around the neck with a bias binding which I do like and if you make the sleeveless version you finish the um, the sort of um, armholes also with bias binding too so yeah, it's a really nice pattern and it's got a good size range too it goes up to a um, 58 and a half inch bust so yes it's a pattern I made a few times in different guises um, I've made sort of like a simple dress version but yes I made this version particularly as a pinafore for layering in the winter as you can see it's quite like a wintry fabric I think um, and this fabric is a sort of cotton fabric which has the kind of twill diagonal texture and I'll stand up a bit so you can see the texture of it So I don't know whether it is a cotton twill, um, but it's, it's quite a nice soft cotton, but a bit more thick, almost feels a bit like a kind of um, flannel cotton or something. It's a bit thicker and cosier than a the cotton and a bit more sort of textured than like a cotton poplin, but it's nice and cosy for a pinafore. And then I went for little navy buttons um, just to sort of tone in with the colours. It's this sort of check fabric in sort of like a grey and a navy. I got this fabric and made this pinafore quite a while ago. I think I bought this fabric from an online fabric shop, which is um, long ago, closed down now. But um, yeah, I just quite enjoy wearing this one. It makes me feel a little bit like um, I'm at school in a way, because I feel like it's got that sort of vibe of it, but I quite like that. Um, and then I'm wearing it, um, oh, in terms of size, I guess you mentioned that first, actually. I've always sized down on the Hinterland dress. It does say, I think that it's designed to be a, a loose fit. And it has got a bit of shaping to it, it has got bust darts there. Um, but yes, I've always sized down um, kind of one size on my measurements, on my bust and waist measurements. I think my hip measurement I've sized down a little bit more, but there's plenty of space because it's a gathered skirt. But yeah, I've always sized down one size just because I didn't want to have too much of a loose fit. And then actually I've added on, there's an optional waist tie and I've added that on with this version to kind of cinch it in the waist. I'll stand up a bit so you can see how it's cinched in. So yeah, um, I think probably at the time I didn't enjoy sewing this one majorly because I had to get all the checks to match across the button placket and everything, but it turned out okay. Um, and I do in enjoy wearing this one. I um, mean, I like the finish of the bias binding and everything. It's nice and cosy. Um, and I've got it layered over um, just another Freya top in this lovely 
um, wide rib knit fabric. I've made this, I've made fair tops in this fabric. It's like a nice cotton rib knit. And I've made fair tops in two colorways, this fabric. They're quite similar actually. One is a light gray colorway. I think I was wearing that earlier in Vlogmas. And this one, it's a bit hard to see on camera, but it's more of like a biscuity sort of earthy tone to it. Um, yeah, I really like them both. They make for an extra cozy fray top and the fabric's nice and stretchy. So it works well for, you need quite a lot of stretch for the fray top. So yes, that is what I'm wearing today. I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on. It is keeping me nice and cozy. It is quite chilly outside today. Oh, and actually I wanted to mention in today's video that this weekend Minerva are having one of their VIP craft club weekends where you can get 20% off everything on the website. So all fabrics and patterns if you're a Minerva Craft Club member. And if you're not a member already, it's quite easy to sign up. I'll include the link in the details down below and you can get that discount this weekend. And this fabric actually is a Minerva fabric. Um, it comes in quite a few colourways and it's perfect for like a really cosy top like I'm wearing today. Um, See, so yeah, I'll link this fabric down below as well. I've got my eye on a couple of fabrics that I've had my eye on for a while, so I'm very tempted to use that discount this weekend and buy them. But yes, I may, may well do that. Um, so the sale starts today, actually, this Friday, and then it goes on till Sunday at midnight um, GMT. So yeah, I'll include all the details down below in case you fancy having a shop and taking advantage of that 20% discount. But yes, I wanted to mention that. And then the next thing I wanted to mention also was um, I mentioned yesterday I'd lost one of my husband's presents and I thought I'd update you that I did find it in the end. And it's funny actually where I found it. I suddenly, it just came to me that I remembered popping something in one of my knitting project bags, which I've got just down here by the sofa. So I had a little rummage through them and the present was in there. So I was quite relieved about that. So that's wrapped now and under the tree where it's nice and safe and shouldn't get lost again. So yeah, I thought I'd just let you know that that did, yeah, that did get found. Um, yeah, I was quite pleased about that. And then the next thing that I wanted to talk about is my sewing plans for today. So yes, I'm quite keen to just carve out a little bit of time for myself to do a little bit of sewing or at least some preparation of a sewing project before my children finish for the Christmas holidays a bit later. And when I was looking through my fabric suitcase yesterday and sort of showing you what's in there, I found this remnant piece of fabric that I actually used quite recently on a project I finished just before Vlogmas. And I still need to share that project, actually. So I'll make sure to share it over the next few days. But I had a small amount of this fabric left and I thought it'd be really fun to do something with it. So I'll show you the fabric. It is this really lovely um, needle cord fabric. And it's a Robert Kaufman corduroy fabric. And I got it quite a while ago from Guthrie Garni. I don't think it's in stock still there. But I love the colour of it. I think the colour is really beautiful, this sort of rich rust colour. Um, and I have a small amount of it left. And I thought what would be really fun is, kind of inspired by the pencil case I made earlier in Vlogmas, I thought it'd be fun to turn it into some sort of crafty item, like a non-dressmaking item, because I don't think there's quite enough for a sort of dressmaking project anyway. And I thought, yeah, I thought it'd make a really lovely um, little sort of, zipped sort of box pouch type bag so I thought if I did that I could maybe use it for storing my makeup or maybe using it for taking toiletries on holiday or something like that but I just thought it'd be really cute in this fabric and quite luxe because the fabric has such a nice sheen to it it's really nice fabric so that is what I think I'm going to do and I thought it'd be fun to do another non-dressmaking project because I really enjoyed the pencil case um, it was quite a quick one and this one I guess might take a little bit longer because it's going to be like a lined um, little boxy pouch bag thing. So kind of like a next step up from the, the um, pencil case, I guess. But I just thought it'd be really fun to give that a go, because I do do mainly dressmaking. I haven't done a lot of sort of non-dressmaking projects um, at all, really, compared to the amount of dressmaking I've done. So yeah, I thought that'd be quite fun. So yes, that is the fabric I'm planning to use for the outer of the um, zipped sort of boxy bag. And then I had a look in my cotton lawn um, folded to see if I could find a nice cotton lawn that I thought would make a nice lining fabric. And I found this fabric here, which I thought would be really cute together with the corduroy. This is a cotton lawn fabric. I think it might be a Lady McElroy cotton lawn, possibly. And I used it quite a long time ago to make a Davenport dress by Friday Pattern Co, which I actually don't have anymore because um, I didn't I didn't love it actually. Um, I've made other Davenport dresses I've really liked, but this one, yeah, I didn't didn't love. Um, I think I probably talked about it at the time. It just wasn't quite right on me. I think I prefer it in a drapier fabric, like a viscose, and this is a cotton lawn, so it's got a little bit more 
well it's not as drapey as a viscose anyway but anyway I have a little bit left of it and um, again it's kind of it's funny funny shaped piece it's like just cut around the edge so not, not lots but I think they'll be enough to use the lining for this bag so I think they'll be quite cute together um and then I also I'm going to use I ordered this a while ago um and I haven't had a chance to use it yet this fleecy um fusible interfacing it's called um Felicelline H640 but yes it's fus fusible fleece and you use it um, on for bag making. So yeah, that is what I'm going to use to kind of fuse on the inside of the outer fabric to give it like a nice sort of, I guess it'll give it a nice sort of squishy feel and a bit of structure to the bag. So I'm looking forward to giving that a go and seeing how it works. So yeah, that is my plan today to kind of cut out the pattern pieces um, and then so sort of actually, because I need to draw them out myself, I think using some of that dots and crosses paper that I use my pencil case, and then start cutting out the actual fabric and just see how far I get today. Um, but yeah, I thought it might be a fun project, and I thought it'd make a really cute little boxy pouch. And I had a look last night, and I found a tutorial on YouTube that I thought would be a good one to follow. So I'll link that down below so you can see what I'll be using. But yeah, it should be a nice fun project, I think, and nice to use up this remnant, this lovely fabric, um, rather than having it sitting in my fabric suitcase. So. Yes, that is the plan for today. I'm looking forward to getting started um, on that project. So I think that's everything that I've got to share right now. So I'm going to head off and start work on that project and I'll catch up with you a little bit later. So yeah, see you in a little bit. Bye. I'm just about to cut out the lining fabric and I thought I'd show you how well the pattern piece fits on the fabric that I have left. Um, yeah, just enough, which is great. I do need to iron the cotton lawn before I actually pin this piece down but I thought I'd show you there that works quite well it would have been a shame if it wasn't quite enough so that's good just need to cut out two of these um now hello so I'm back again I'm at my sewing table now and I thought I'd update you on how I'm getting on with my boxy zipper pouch project so so far I have first of all prepared the pattern pieces themselves so there are only two pattern pieces, so nice and straightforward. And I've made the pattern pieces using this um, dots and crosses paper that I had left over from when I made my Luskin tire bags. I've got a decent amount left over, so it's quite handy to have that in stock. But this is the main pattern piece, um, and you need to cut for this two of the outer fabric and two of the lining fabric and two of the fusible fleece fabric. And I'm going for the medium size of the pouch um, because there are three sizes available with the tutorial. There is a large size, which looked quite large. I wasn't sure I wanted to go that big. The medium size, and there's also a very, very cute um, small size, which looked adorable, but I would, wasn't sure it would be as practical. So I thought the medium size would be a good one to try. So that's my main pattern piece. And then the only other pattern piece um, is uh, this, this little one here. And you use that, you just cut one of these and use it to make the little tabs at the end of the zip. So I think that should be quite a nice detail on the bag. And I had a little sort of start of watching the tutorial and um, the tutorial, the lady was saying you can use the sort of lining fabric to make a little bit of a feature of the tabs or you can use the main fabric. And I thought I'd go with the main fabric and keep it quite sort of simple on the outside. I think if I went for this fabric, um, it might stand out a bit too much for the tabs. So yes, those are my pattern pieces and I've cut out all of the pieces of fabric as you have seen from that little video before, I had just the right amount of, of sort of depth of fabric to cut out my two lining pieces. And then I've got my tab piece here. I kind of spent a bit of time, which is silly, um, I'm going to worry about which way to cut the corduroy stripes, but I decided to go this way because I think the tabs will be like that. And I thought it'd be neater if they went that way than across the tab. So yeah, <laughs> that is what I did there. And then I've got my two main pieces and I've attached, I've sort of fused on the fleecy interfacing. So you can see it makes them quite thick, actually. Um, I think this is the right sort of stuff. Um, and I remember when I bought it, it did seem to get a lot of good reviews online. It took a bit more sort of pressing to um, attach than like your average interface. And I guess it's a bit more sort of squishy and yeah. But what I did was I kind of turned the iron up to quite a high setting and then I put it this way up on the ironing board um, and then I put a um, sort of like a little sort of sort of piece of sort of lightweight cotton on top just to avoid the iron sort of damaging the corduroy fabric. So I was pressing quite hard. So yes, that's all fused on now. 
So I think the next step is for me to get out my sewing machine um, and start sewing. I have got a zip somewhere too as well. I need to um, find that. I think, yeah, was I going to use? A, I've, got a, I've got a couple of black and white zips just in my stash that are fairly long that I could use. And I don't know whether to go for actually a white or a black. Um, I'm thinking maybe a black, possibly. But I don't think the zip is the first thing to insert, so I probably don't need to decide straight away. I'm not sure, actually. I'm going to have another little watch of the tutorial, get my sewing machine out and then get sewing. So yes, I'll do a bit of sewing now and I'll catch up with you again in a little bit. So see you in a little bit. Bye. So I've got my sewing machine all set up now and I've got the right thread um, threaded through it so it's all ready to go and I just wanted to mention a couple of things. One that I forgot to mention earlier and the other thing I just discovered and thought it might be worth mentioning too. So the thing that I forgot to mention earlier is um, I mentioned that I'm making a lined pouch um, but I wanted to mention the tutorial I found um, the final bag has no raw edges in it the way it's sewn. So I thought that would give a really nice finish, which is why I went for that tutorial. So I thought I'd just mention that. And then the thing I just discovered is about the um, fusible fleece interfacing I'm using. So through Vlogmas, I've been trying to link everything I talk about, so fabrics and patterns and any notions. And I have an Amazon favourites list where I just pop on there um, all of the things I bought on Amazon that are sewing related. And I got this fusible fleece fabric from Amazon. So I went on to add that to the list. So in case you wanted to find which fab fleece interfacing I've been using, you could see it on my list because I've got a link to the list in the blurb down below. And when I had a look and sort of researched for the fleece, I found there are a couple of different options. So you may already know this. There's a high, a sort of volume option and then a low volume option. And I bought the more voluminous option. So the thicker um, fleece interfacing. So there is a lighter weight one too. And actually, when I was looking at the tutorial just now, I think maybe the lady in the tutorial is using a slightly less voluminous, a lower volume one that I'm using. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it should still turn out okay. I guess my pouch might turn out a bit more squishy um, than maybe it's intended to be. I'm hoping it'll be fine. I mean, it's not super thick and if you squish it down a bit, it, is, it doesn't make a reef for a really, really bulky um, combination. But yeah, I thought I'd just mention that. Um, because I didn't know that and I've learned something new from having another search. There are different volumes available of fusible fleece interfacing and I have more of the sort of yeah, thicker one. So I thought I'd just mention that in case it's helpful, but I'm going to do a little bit of sewing now. So um, yes, I'll do that and I'll come back to you in a little bit. Bye! done a bit of sewing now so I thought I'd pop back on and share how I'm getting on and the first step um, in sewing up this zipper pouch was putting the zip in actually I don't know why I was thinking it might not be the first step because um I remember it was the first step on the pencil case so silly me but anyway I popped the zip in now so I decided to go for the black zip and you can see the zip's a bit too long for the fabric pieces because the way the bag's designed is it sort of curves around onto the sides I guess that means when you kind of open up the zip it kind of falls open quite wide and you have quite a big opening at the top of the pouch so yes the zip went in um quite nicely I decided to go for the black as you can see and um I made sure that both my pieces of the corduroy have the nap running the same way so they're both sort of running the smooth way downwards on the bag because I think it can look different in the light depending on which way the nap is so if I'd have done it in different ways on the different sides it might have looked like the bag was made out of two slightly different tones of fabric maybe but yes, the only um, slightly fiddly bit I found about inserting the zip was you kind of sew the zip with the sort of, you have the sort of main fabric um, sort, of, sort of right side up and then the zip and then the lining fabric on top right side down. So they're kind of the two fabrics are sandwiching the zip. And when I sewed along, I did find my top layer, my um, lining fabric starts to stretch slightly, not loads, but it just meant I had to just slightly adjust my clips because it was going to get to the point where it would rock up a little bit as it was going along. I don't know whether it's just because um, it's not interfaced, so it has like a teeny tiny bit of give in it. Um, 
but yes it, it turned out okay I just kind of adjusted as I went along just slightly for that little bit of give in the fabric as I went but um yes anyway so the zip is in I think the next step is to top stitch down the sides here but I think I'm going to pop this project away just for now because um it's getting towards lunchtime and I want to have a bit of lunch and then just get a couple of things sorted before I go and collect my children from school um, early today. So I'm hoping I'll be able to carry on this project over the next day or two. The weekends can be a bit busy, but I really would like to squeeze a bit of sewing in maybe in the evenings or something. So I'll keep you updated on how I get on with this one. I think it'll be quite cute. I'm not sure if the black was it was the right choice or not, but I'm hoping it'll look nice once it's all done. I thought the white might just be a little bit too like, bright um, against the fabric. Um, so yeah, anyway, that is how it's going so far. So it's been nice to do a little bit of that. Um, and I've got my little tab iron, so I guess that'll need to be stitched down the side as well. But yes. So yes, um, I think I will finish this video off here today, just to give me a chance to start getting it edited before I head up to the school. So thank you so much for joining me for another day. Um, tomorrow will be the weekend and we've got some exciting Christmassy plans. Um, and there'll be some more sewing chat too, as ever. So I look forward to seeing you again for day 16 tomorrow. But in the meantime, I hope you have a lovely day. And yes, see you tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.